Oh, hi. I'm Guido Notoradega. You may remember me from such papers as Against the Dehumanization of Decision Making and Machine Rules. I've been teaching and researching intellectual property for a decade uh, in several countries, including the UK, Italy, Russia and uh, Germany. When I don't travel, I'm an intellectual property lawyer, and as such, my main concern is to make sure that uh, private monopolies don't trump the public interest and fundamental freedoms, including freedom of expression. Intellectual property uh, refers to a number of distinct legal bodies, uh, including copyright, patents, trademarks, designs, and uh, trade secrets. Starting off with copyright. Copyright covers uh, most cultural expressions, uh, such as literary works, music, plays, and even computer programs. But let's just take this book that I co-edited with Francis Hamilton, uh, and that you can find on Amazon and in all the best uh, e-commerce uh, websites. Uh, this book uh, is one book, but it uh, contains four different types of copyrights. You have my copyright on the editorial matter and on the selection of the chapters, the copyright of the authors of the, sing the individual chapters uh, that rests with those authors, then there is the copyright on the layout of the pages and on the graphic uh, design of the, uh, of the cover of the book that is, rests with the publisher. Uh, but what about this little logo that you can see here, uh, Rutledge? Well, that's not copyright, that's trademarks. Trademarks uh, refer to any sign, such as logos, that are distinctive, that help you, the consumer, distinguish one business's products from, uh, their, uh, from their competitors. A particular type of trademark is called collective uh, trademark. A collective trademark tells you, the consumer, that that product uh, adheres to a certain standard of production. Uh, and that's the case with Tweet, like the jacket, the jacket that I'm wearing that I bought when I was uh, in Harris. Uh, as you can see, every Tweet product, every, for instance, Tweet jacket has these, uh, these logos here. The, and that's a, collective collective trademark that is telling me that this jacket was made according to a traditional method uh, and it was made on uh, the island of Harris. And it's important to know that trademarks such as this really can sustain entire economies such as the economy of uh, the outer uh, Hebrides. But Tweed is only one of the many things for which uh, Scotland is recognized all around the world. Uh, another thing is inventions. We have obviously uh, James Watt uh, and Alexander J. Graham uh, Bell are probably the most known uh, inventors in Scotland. And I would like to talk about one particular invention. Oh, hello. And this is the invention of the first uh, telephone. First telephone was invented and patented by uh, Edinburgh born Alexander Graham, uh, Alexander Graham Bell. And he was accused to steal the area from a number of uh, competitors, other inventors such as um, Elijah Gray. And there, there seems to be evidence that actually uh, Bell might have uh, sort of stolen part of that uh, invention and indeed the person that adjudicated the case was an alcoholic who was indebted to Bell's lawyer. However, despite uh, everything, Bell was successful in defending his patent and his invention in all of the 587 lawsuits that uh, he was faced with. Um, but patents are not always the best way to protect, to protect new ideas. Increasingly, uh, we are recognizing the role of trade secrets, like iron brew's recipe. Everybody in the world loves iron brew. I do. I do. Me too. Everybody loves it, but nobody knows what's in it. 
maybe girders. Um, that's a secret. And trade secrecy contributes to the in greatly to the value of uh, a product. But the value of a product doesn't always come from the taste. Often it comes from the look. Now picture this. Italy, mid 80s. We have a French designer called Philippe Stark who is having a wonderful dinner at a pizzeria near Florence. Uh, he's eating squids, delicious squids. And while he's eating, he's drawing on a napkin these squids. And these drawings become increasingly abstract uh, to the point that they become this. This is considered the most controversial um, design for a juicer in the 20th, uh, in the 20th century and it led to a number of, uh, of, legal, uh, of legal disputes uh, but also cultural disputes because uh, the aesthetics of it prevailed on the function of it and its designer uh, is uh, famously commented by saying the purpose of, uh, of this product is not to squeeze lemons, it is to start a conversation. And that's the purpose of, of this video today, uh, not to squeeze all the lemons of intellectual property already, but just to start a conversation about it, a conversation about how to incentivize creativity and innovation in a more open and modern and diverse way.